Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back, I'm Matt again, A to Z Auto Masters. Today we got this 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Uh, it came in with a knocking problem. Uh, it has a 3.6 liter V6. Uh, I seen this problem numerous times before and I did it probably uh, at least five or six times before. On, on the 3.6 liter, uh, on a Grand Cherokees, the Chrysler's 200, the Rubicons, those engines fit multiple cars and they have the same problems with all these cars. Uh, so today we're gonna look at this knocking issue. This is gonna be a major repair. You're gonna need to really watch this video carefully. Probably you need to watch it a couple times before you start the repair. Any little mistakes you do in this repair, you can cause an intensive uh, internal engine damage. So please make sure you watch this video very carefully and uh, take your time maybe to watch it a couple more times before you start the repair. And please, if you learn anything from my video, if my video was helpful, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button and leave us some comments. Let us know how did the job go. And don't forget to subscribe. Okay guys, so today we're doing the rocker arms and the push rod on this, uh, on this truck. Uh, there's really, uh, Two ways to do that i'll show you i'm gonna do this in two videos one will be a shortcut uh, that's my way of doing it uh, you can cut at least maybe seven eight hours of the job uh, and i'm gonna make another video of exactly how the manufacturer wanted to do it so i'm gonna be posting both videos and uh, you decide which way you want to do it okay guys so uh we got the hood open, the car been running. Usually it, it, the sound intensifies uh, after the car gets hot. Uh, so the car been running for about just five minutes now and you can definitely hear that uh, knocking sound. And it's obviously coming from uh, this bank here. We go to the driver's side, uh, it's not as loud. So it seems like it's mainly coming from the passenger side. So we can, I really don't recommend doing just one bank. So we basically will uh, we'll take both covers off and, uh, and we'll do both banks at the same time. Okay guys, as I mentioned earlier, this job is really if you go by the book, it's about 20 hour job. Uh, I'm gonna show you a shortcut, uh, how to do this in a lot less than 20 hours, but you really need to follow everything I do exactly the way I do it. Any mistakes, if you do anything wrong, you really can cause a very intensive internal engine damage in this car. So please, before we start the job, make sure you watch this video carefully and make sure you watch it at least a couple times, go over the details, and you have to do it exactly the way I'm gonna do it. Because if you don't do it exactly the way I do it, and you cause internal engine damage or you blow up the engine, I'm not responsible for this. So please make sure you really follow this video very carefully. Okay guys, so we're just gonna start by taking the, everything on top of the engine here apart. It might look different in a Grand Cherokee. The intake system will look different. Uh, I have other videos about uh, how to remove the intake manifold on a Grand Cherokee uh, and how to do valve cover gaskets on a Chrysler 200. So they're all the same, the same exact engine, 3.6 liter, just a little bit of differences here and there. I'm gonna make sure to leave all the links for uh, the other videos in the description so you can go back to these videos and see what you can use. Of course, these were size 10 and you have the clamps here are size 8, 8 millimeter. And be careful, there's always the sensor here, the air temperature sensor. Don't yank this out and break it. 
So basically we need to get this intake manifold out of the way and, and we need to remove both valve covers and get the covers off. You're gonna disconnect all the sensors, all the hoses, everything really attached to the manifold need to be disconnected. So. Okay guys, so we gotta take these four, two bolts and two nuts off here. This bracket is not gonna be in a Grand Cherokee. These are gonna probably be just Wranglers and maybe on a Chrysler 200, if you're doing it in a Chrysler 200. Grand Cherokees don't have this uh, side bracket here. We're gonna get these ignition coils out. Okay, so we get this harness out of the way. Coils are out. Basically, we're gonna have to disconnect the fuel line and take this harness from the fuel injectors off and move it out to the side. We're gonna make sure we have a rag here to absorb all the fuel. You don't want to make a mess and uh, cause problems or cause fire. Now we can lift up the whole harness with the fuel line and tuck them to the side. Basically, this whole valve cover is ready to come out. And we're gonna need to do the same exact thing here. In this case here, we're gonna have to take this coolant line off. So we're gonna make sure we drain some of the coolant and uh, take these lines out of the way. We're gonna take the bracket, same thing, the harness, and uh, get the cover out. Okay, so before we go any further, we're just gonna stuff some towels here, paper towels, rags, anything, to make sure nothing falls in here while you work. And make sure you get them out before you put this car back together. Don't forget these here.
Okay, guys, so we pulled the lock out, push this in, and slide that gray part down. Okay, it's right there. Okay, guys, so since we have these two bolts are behind this tray here, and it's really a bit tight, so we're just gonna take the battery off, take this tray out of the way, and get a lot more space in here. Battery. All this is 10 millimeter size, 10, 10 millimeter. We have the battery tied down. Okay, so now since we got this bracket out of the way, we're just gonna take the rest of the harness out. Okay, so We'll basically make sure this harness is completely detached from the firewall here. Okay, just like that. And now we get this valve cover out of the way. Before we take this out, we're gonna have to get the PCV valve out because it, it actually clips on the cam. So you can take the cover off without taking the PCV valve out. And also, I'd rather take these magnets off before you take them out. Now, since we got both bolts out of the way, we can just pull the PCV valve out. Just like that. It sits just like that.
And now we're just gonna take all these eight millimeter bolts, all of them will take them out. Okay, so right now we got a T30 here and we have to get these cam caps off. So just pay attention. Chrysler really wants you to take all this out, take the timing cover off, take the chain out, and remove the cams to do this job. So that's where the difference is now. Uh, we cutting probably maybe 10 hours of the job by doing it this way. It's dangerous. If you do it right, it works. You just have to follow. So now I'm just gonna pick any of these rivets and Put a mark here, mark there, and on the rivet itself, just like that here. Just in case this chain moves, you know. And same thing in this side. Here's one, here's two. Okay, and now we're good to go. We need to make sure we mark these caps because they have to go exactly in the same direction and the same place where they came out from. So, so basically we're gonna draw an arrow facing forward. That's basically the direction where it came out from. The arrow points to the front of the motor. Just like that. And you're gonna write here one, two, three. And these are the exhaust side. So we can put E, E, and E. On this side, again, arrow will be facing forward. One, two, three, and we're gonna have intake. So we can put I in here. Okay guys, so we basically have everything marked. Originally, they all come marked from the manufacturer, but just in case, for any reason, you can't read the marking. The marking is not there. Just you do put your own markings. So if you really pull them out, you will have like right there, three E, okay? Exhaust number three, you can count this as one, one, two, three. But since we're not taking this out, we start from one here. And now you have to take it easy while you loosen this little by little, make sure if the cam is lifting up. You don't really have to set uh, TDC, top dead center. You don't have to. As long as this chain doesn't move, we are good. That's the last one here. And for this, we're just gonna crack it loose a little more. But we'll leave this cap in place for now. I'm not gonna take it out. Okay guys, so we got those cam caps off. And now it's a socket 27. We need to spin this engine very slow.
we're going clockwise to get these lobes up and away from the rocker arms. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. We should have enough clearance now and let's check that. And now with a magnet. Just like that. I'm gonna pull it out. This was absolutely one of the ones making the noise. You can definitely see the play in that bearing and you can see the scar right here and there. The cam was definitely hitting here and that bearing is no good. You can see a lot of play in here. I'll show you in the new ones, there's absolutely no play. Same thing with the back one, I'm just gonna get it out. This one actually is not as bad. You can see there's not very, very minimum play. So this one is all right, but again, once we open this, we're changing all of them. So we got both of them out. Now we can get these. Push rod type of thing, valves, whatever you, you call them. We need to also get these out. We can just lift up a little, just, just a little bit. And we're not prying on any one of these lobes, we're only prying against here. And just very little, enough to get it out, Not nothing crazy. Just like that, this one. Other one back here. All you need is probably just a millimeter or so. Nothing crazy. Look at that. Just out. I know some people probably watching this and having a heart attack right now, but it's doable, guys. It's not a big deal. Okay, guys, so these are the new push rods that's the original part number just right there they come one in a pack and now these are the rocker arms again that's the original part number and I believe they come eight in a pack Now we got the new ones right there. Just gonna push it in. You can always use a magnet or a needle nose, something like that. Very gentle, just slide them back in. like that slide the next one in so we have both push rods are replaced in here now since these two lobes are also up we can pull these out just like that okay pull this out Okay guys, I can't say this enough. There's, you don't pry too much on this cam. You can break it just enough to slide it out. Okay. You can see, if you look at the cam, one direction, the cam is really going up. And if you turn the other way, the cam is going down. So, because you have these lobes pushing up when you turn. So, you're gonna go back this way. Basically, you want this cam at the highest point
Okay. There you go. Okay, here's one. One here, no. One here. Okay, guys, so we got all four push rods changed. Now we can slide the rocker arms underneath. Okay, as you can see, the new ones, there's absolutely no play in that bearing. Okay, in and out, there's no play. Just the bearing. Okay, so you're gonna make sure this push rod thing fits in here. And this back part, the back of the valve, goes in here so make sure this sitting is perfectly straight so just like that I'm gonna slide it see just like that same thing here Okay, so we got two and two. We got one left in this exhaust side. Then we're gonna move up to the intake side on this head, and then we move up to the other side. Okay, so now we got these pulled in. That's the last one to do. So the lobe of the cam is down here now. So we're gonna have to turn it to get this lobe up to give us enough clearance to get this these out. So. Just very easy. Take your time and make sure it's done right. Don't force anything. If it's stuck, you have something wrong. It shouldn't be stuck. It should, you should have some resistance, but it shouldn't be very hard. To make it a little bit easier, you can take the spark plugs out to make sure there's no compression, but you don't really have to. Okay, let's see. Can get these out. Okay, here is one out. The ones closest to the sprockets are usually the hardest, but they're doable. It's not impossible. Okay, so we really need to lift up this cam a little bit more here to get some slack here. Again, we have this cap loose but it's not completely out. Just like that. You see the cam lifted up just a little, but it's not out of place. Now this one comes off. Okay, and now for the last one here, we're just gonna, now we're gonna take this one out. There you go, it's the last one. If you really don't feel comfortable at the end right there, you can just leave these push rods, the last two, you can leave them in. They're barely, they, they, I really never seen them go bad. Usually the rocker arms that goes bad, but uh, since they're here, that's why I'm changing them, so. Just one. Here's two. 
and now we go with the rocker arms. Okay, basically you got everything in place now. This cam have to go, have to sit back where it came from. So, just keep pressure down there on the cam. Okay. Right there. Now it's back in. Go back with the first cap. Just knock for now and then we're gonna torque everything down. Okay guys, we're gonna make sure all these rocker arms are sitting in place exactly where they belong. Nothing moved while you're doing all of this, okay? That should be the view right now. As you can see, all of them straight, sitting straight on the valve and sitting on this, the top ball, sitting in place. Okay guys, so basically this side is done. Again, these are hand tight. We're gonna torque everything when we're done. We're gonna crack these loose. And we're gonna do the same thing marking. So we have facing forward. And we got one, I, two, I, of course for intake, three, I. Okay, so we got all three caps off. I'm just gonna loosen this a little bit more. And you can see right away the effect on this cam is still rising up here. As you can see, this is loose, but again, for now, not all the way out. We grab the magnet, here you go. All the rocker arms, other one. These are the push rods are out. Okay. Some sides are a lot easier than the others, but so this side was fairly quick. We're just gonna throw the new push rods in, the rocker arms, and then spin it a little bit and free the, the front one. Okay guys, so we're about to put these push rods back just slide them back in they have to be perfectly straight okay guys so just again we're pushing these push rods in and they're very tiny clearance they're the exact fit so sometimes they're very hard to fit in just take your time if it's uh, and it has to be 100% straight before you push it in Okay, so all four rods, push rods are in. Now we can put these rocker arms and deal with that last one on this head. And now we start sliding these rocker arms back. And again, make sure you have this facing the ball on the push rod, sits 100% straight. And the end of the valve sits right in between here.
Okay, so they're all in now. I'm gonna start by turning the engine a little bit. Keep that lobe away from the push rods and the, and the rocker arms and see if we can get enough clearance for that. Just one click at the time guys, one turn at the time, take your time and spin it slow. Okay, now we got these slopes up. Let's see if we got that, if we have enough clearance. You can see right now, you can move them by hand. Just gonna throw this the new one back in. Okay, so we got this cap now loose, raised up all the way. And again, just very gentle and slow. We're lifting up right here. Right here. That's the last push rod on this on this head. And now we got these new rocker arms. These are the last two for this head, so we can move on to the other head. Okay, now once we have everything in, as you can see, just push it back in place. Okay, now they're all snug, now we can torque them down. Okay guys, so it's time to torque these uh, cam caps down or the cam shaft bearings down. And uh, the torque spec on them is a 10 newton meter or 89 inch pound. So that's what we're going with, 10 newton meter. And we're gonna start from the middle out. Now we do this side. Okay, so this side is completely done. They're torqued down. You take one more look on all these rocker arms. Make sure they're all sitting straight, none of them popped out before you close it, okay? And I like also to wipe this magnet back here. That's for the camshaft position sensor. That's where it gets the reading from. And sometimes they have shaving metal like that from when these go bad, so. Okay. And once we're done, we're gonna take a look at these markings. 
that we did in the beginning of the video. Make sure they're still lined up. The chain didn't move. Nothing moved out of place. And they're perfectly lined up. So we're ready to close this side and start on the other side. Okay, so we're ready to install this cover. Again, we have to put silicone uh, where the timing cover meets the head. There's a separation in here and sometimes oil seep through and that's why you put silicone in that spot. A drop in here and a drop on the other side. And now we're ready with that cover. Again, we have to put the back in first. Just like that, we're gonna line these up and push in. You can see the silicone start ooze out on both sides, which is perfect. And now we tie this down. Okay, and always start from the middle and work your way out to tie and to loose, you start from the out and Okay guys, so we snuck them all down and uh, for you out there that like to torque everything down, these are 12 newton meter or 106 inch pound. So it's gonna go with 12 newton meter. Okay, so now we have this valve cover torqued down to 12 newton meter. We can put this uh, camshaft position sensor back, all these coils, and we need to slide that PCV valve back in. Uh, guys, those PCV valve, they have an updated version. Uh, if your car does not have the updated version, uh, I spoke with your uh, local dealership. If you don't have the updated version, you should change it now. Okay, so now we have uh, almost this side is uh, almost completely done. We still have just the tubes and we can put the tray. But before we do all of this, we're going to do the other side and then we close the whole thing one time. Now we can take these two magnets, the camshaft magnets. And again, just uh, find a solid spot, sound like the alternator here, for example, and just very easy. Don't break the cover, just pry on it. Okay. Right there. We're going to crack them all loose again.
again we mark in everything Okay, so you guys basically got the idea. Same thing, we remove all three caps. We leave this loose all the way. Okay. And now we're gonna start rotating to get these loose. And again, before we do the rotation, we're just gonna mark here like the other side. And now we can start rotating. Okay, now we can slide these uh, four push rods in, rock our arms, and then we deal with the front one. Okay, so we got these four already done. So we're gonna rotate back to get this lobe out of the way and get one of these lobes down. This basically the middle lobe down. Gonna pry right there, very easy. While my hand on the cam, pushing down on the cam. Okay guys, so now put the new push rods in the last cylinder here. Now we can spin this cam back. Put pressure here. Push down on it while you turn it. Right there. Perfect, they all look good. Now we put the cam caps back. Okay, so they're all snug again. We're gonna do this side and then torque everything down one time.
again we're trying to get that first slope down So now we spun it, now we have the second lobe, it's facing down to keep this cam up. And again, I'm gonna lift up here very slow, very gentle, keep this cam cap up and let's see. Okay guys, new ones coming back in. Same exact thing all over again. Just take your time and do it right. Again, we're turning while pushing down in the cam and it basically just fall back in place by itself, see? And again, we're torquing these down to 10 Newton meter. Got the new gasket, new grommets. Okay, moment of truth, guys. We're gonna start this car now. And uh, it might sound funny in the beginning, uh, and that's normal. Been sitting on the lift for a couple of days, no oil. Top of the engine have no oil, so. We just did an oily change, so. Uh, beautiful. Nice and quiet, 
no ticking. Beautiful, no ticking. We're gonna let it run, make sure it gets hot and listen to uh, the knock again, but I'm very sure that's, uh, that's the end of that. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you subscribe.